Welcome back into the Running Eagle Sports Network. My name is Billy Mangum, the Sports Information Director here at Life University. I'm joined today by head men and women swimming coach, Patrick Sonsting. Uh, coach, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. So we're here to go over the 2019-2020 schedule. Um, coming off a, a very, very uh, successful season, I would say last year, uh, multiple All-Americans, I mean, pretty much rewrote the record book here at Life University. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, you know, first before we get into your schedule, how do you, what's, what's your strategy to, to carry over, you know, all of that success that you had a year ago and kind of, you know, continue that and move the program forward? Um, well, fortunately, we only lost one senior last year on the women's side, and um, we had two um, that we lost on the men's side. So basically, we have almost everyone returning and just bringing in some young, fresh talent. Yeah, uh, I mean, every everybody pretty much killed it last year. You know, Victoria Acosta had a, a fantastic season. Um, bringing back pretty much all of the men that you had last year, uh, minus uh, Gustav, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got you know an outstanding recruiting class coming in. Um, definitely, definitely very excited. So let's jump into your schedule. Uh, start out, um, you know, early October. And swimming is kind of one of those sports for everybody that doesn't know that you know it kind of transitions. It kind of starts in October. And then you kind of go and then you get into December and then January, February is when it really, that's that's when you want to be swimming your best. That's when it matters most. Um, so, you know, those October, November meets are, are they still count, I mean, yeah. obviously. But, you know, those are kind of, you know, preparing your body. What, exactly. how can I shave off seconds for nationals? How exactly. can I improve myself in the water? Right. Um, so talk a little bit about that process. Um, yeah, so you actually kind of hit it on the head. Um, early on in the season is more about race strategy, mental toughness, um, getting their hand to the wall first, um, to whereas, um, like you said, January and February, um, leading into nationals in March, that is more about the times. So in the beginning of the year, we're not so concerned with times. Um, they always are good to have, but um, yeah, it's more about race strategy, swimming fast, tired, um, conference and nationals are three four day long meets with preliminary and final sessions so that's two a days um, so it's really just training and getting the body ready to swim fast for multiple days in a row yeah um i mean i i think it's i think it's fascinating it's it's such a you know it's not a sprint it's a marathon kind of thing mm -hmm. uh kind of season kind of race totally um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see. So, you know, one of the things that we're implementing this year um, is the new green game aspect. Um, and, you know, you do have two home games, uh, October 12th and October 19th. Um, I believe they're both later in the day as well. Yes, um, in the evening time. About mm -hmm. 7, 7 p.m.? 5, um, 5, 5 o'clock-ish, okay. yes. Um, so that October 19th, taking on Campbellsville at the Cobb, uh, Cobb County Aquatic Center right down the road. Um, what can fans expect that have never been to a swimming meet before? Um, well, they can expect... This is where you sell the meet. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> they can expect some um, risque costumes. <laughs> um, they can expect to see um, some hype uh, when it comes to the relays. I know it's going to be an Olympic year, so people kind of get become swimming fans for two weeks, and um, the relays are always a fan favorite. So um, the, we kick off the meet with a relay and then finish it with a relay. Um, there's some longer swims, which um, take a little bit of time. They're more strategic. Uh, everyone loves the big sprints um, down and back. That's like the big water polo looking type mm -hmm. men and women. And um, yeah, we're, we're competing against the University of the South at home for the first time this year. They're a very, very old institution with um, uh, a lot of uh, good depth and resources. And um, since we've been becoming more competitive in uh, recent years, they reached out to see if they can come compete against us, which is oh, really good. Awesome. Um, my first year here, I reached out to many teams um, looking to compete against them. And, and I didn't get a lot of responses because we were small and not competitive. And I think that's one thing that differs between our sport and other sports is other, uh, you know, like in soccer or basketball, they're looking to get some wins on their schedule and, and compete against some people that might not be tough competition. But in swimming, uh, the better competition or the more competitive, the better. So mm -hmm. now that we've raised our profile, uh, we have some good, uh, 
duels coming up that uh, probably uh, we'll have to take the losing side on that. But that's kind of like you mentioned, uh, the beginning of the year. Um, it's about learning how to uh, train and fail even and, and get your hand to the wall first so that when it matters uh, at nationals, um, the times will take care of themselves and you can get on that podium. Yeah, I mean, just, just looking at the schedule, I mean, you see national champion after national champion after national champion. Uh, University of the Cumberlands absolutely dominated mm -hmm. uh, the, swim, the swim scene last year. Um, you know, we've got a duel with them at their place. And, um, you know, knowing their SID, shout out Tommy Chazanoff, um, the way that they run things is just completely different. I mean, mm -hmm. it's almost, you know, when you go down to that SCAD Invitational, it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, di it's a different atmosphere. Absolutely. It's, it's almost like that Nationals atmosphere mm -hmm. where you're going up against kids that are going to win National Championships. It's Absolutely. not, okay, you know, this will be a competitive race. We mm -hmm. might win a couple. It's, right. This is, this is where you set the bar. And I think that's absolutely genius of you. I don't know if you plan this on purpose, I but do. Um, two weeks out of Mid South Championships to race against Cumberlands, that kind of final, you know, okay, here, here's where you are heading into the national scene. Mm -hmm. Here's, here's what we need to work on, or here's our realistic expectation. You know, you mm -hmm. might take top five. Right. Um, so talk a little bit about that. You know, the SCAD Invitational to at the beginning of December. Um, and then you got about a month off um, to kind of train, you know, kind of pump the brakes. I think that's what you yeah. talked about last year where you train, train, train. And then after December, you should be in swimming shape and then it's just ride the wave. Right. Um, yeah. So I try to, uh, going back to competing against Mid-South Conference teams um, with a lot of clout, um, we... I try to hit all of the, the people that we'll see at conference because conference is kind of a, um, in our conference, Mid-South Conference, um, I think multiple of the schools are in the top 10 um, at nationals. So we have the most competitive uh, conference in swimming. So I like to go to a, a meet um, with our members as uh, much as possible, even um, like Lindsay Wilson, Campbellsville, um, and like you mentioned, it's good to get those uh, duels out of the way so that we can hit up um, our SCAD Invitational, which is what we call a mid-season taper meet. Um, and that is where we see competition of people who are much better than us, who will probably, there's a couple NCAA schools there who have swimmers that would win in AI nationals. And I think it's good and humbling to, to compete against that, um, to chase people that are much faster than you. And then, like you mentioned, after December, um, we'll head into conference and then we'll start to pull back on the reins and let the bodies recover and rest. So all that hard work after being pummeled in the water, um, the muscles will heal and then the, the mind will know what to do and they'll be in tip top shape to uh, hopefully put up a good fight against these schools that are much more competitive than us. Yeah, and I think one of the most interesting things that I've heard you say you know, to some of your athletes is, you know, you want to be racing tired mm -hmm. at the beginning of the season. Yeah, always. And for people that, you know, people might hear that, they're like, what? Mm -hmm. You want me to game time and be tired? Right. Um, so I think that kind of explains what you just said. You know, you want to be tired, pushing your body. So then when you get to January, February, March, it's you're not trying. Right. Your body's already in and shape knows what to and do. It, it feels easy. Mm hmm. Um, so talk a little bit about, you know, um, to last thing here, uh, NAIA Nationals, a little, a little, you know, pretty much almost the same distance. Uh, they were in Georgia last year yeah. and now they're in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. Yes. Um, talk a little bit about that atmosphere and, uh, you know, how do you, how do you prepare a, a pretty young team? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you do have returners, but they're all, you know, sophomores, mm -hmm. juniors. Um, how do you prepare a pretty young team? Um, for what I would expect is, you know, a pretty crazy atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be 600 swimmers on deck. Um, and, you know, it's hard to kind of mimic that throughout the season. Uh, for freshman swimmers, a lot of times they haven't been in a competitive atmosphere like that. Um, University of Tennessee's Aquatic Center, where we'll be competing at nationals, is, is a very fast, notorious pool. Uh, lots of Olympians train in there. Um, so, yeah, we, that's why we uh, go to our mid-season invite at SCAD. Uh, there's probably about 
uh, 12 to 15 universities that attend that meet, um, which creates a really, really competitive environment. Um, so like I said, it's kind of a dress rehearsal um, for nationals. I try to create that um, so that they are prepared. I did notice last year um, at SCAD, which was very telling, um, you know, since we were a much smaller team there, a lot of my freshmen, which was our largest uh, incoming class last year, was our freshman class, um, felt intimidated and you could tell that they didn't mm -hmm. really feel like they belonged there. You know, you have these big universities from Florida with, you know, rolling up on their big buses, coming mm -hmm. off looking you know like the size of Olympians is just big German dudes and you know these women who look like they're on the USA water polo team <laughs> um, and and it was good like because we I got to see that on their faces um, and then we got to prepare and and I let them know you know that's what it's gonna be like at nationals and um, and you're just as good and we need to start preparing for that so yeah it's it's like a dress rehearsal essentially um, uh, I kind of run it like a Broadway show. It's it's uh, it's an art and it's a performance and um, and that's how we do it. Yeah, I, I think you know a uh, heck of a job by you know yourself and um, you know all your assistants. Um, you know, kind of preparing those kids. So, um, any expectations this year? Uh, what would you say you know is kind of your uh, program goal for both your men and your women's side? Um, so last year our men um, were a little bit larger than our women's team. This year uh, we've evened it out. We have uh, the same number on the men's and women's rosters. Um, so I would definitely be looking out for our women this year. Um, I'm looking for some top 10, uh, top, I'm gonna be, you know, um, adventurous and say top five finishes, uh, hopefully that at nationals um, on, our, on our relay teams. So we'll see, uh, a lot of time between now and then, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely excited. Uh, you've got a, a lot a lot to build off or a lot of that you're uh, kind of adding to, I would mm -hmm. say. Absolutely. Um, well, Coach, thank you so much for uh, sitting down and joining me today and uh, best of luck this year. Thank you, Billy.